The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, it was the summer of 1970. And it was during Vacation Bible School at Breckenridge Lutheran Church that I first learned this new song. It was a new fun song that was all the rage at Bible School. I was 10 years old, so I'm giving away my age. And it was probably one of the last years that I went to Vacation Bible School. Kids used to go that late back then. Uh, the song we learned was simple, but it had a nice catchy tune. And everyone picked it up quite quickly. The song was called... Love, 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 that's what it's all about. How many of you know that song? Raise your hand. Yeah, a lot of you do. Good. Guess what? You're going to sing it this morning, all right? So I'll start us off and you join right in, all right? Love, 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 that's what it's all about. Because God loves us, we love each other, mother, father, sister, brother, everyone sing and shout, because that's what it's all about. It's about love, love, love. It's about love, love, love. You did very well. Even I started a little higher for you. Well, you know, it's one of those songs that once you've heard it, it's a little bit hard to get it out of your head, so thank you very much for this afternoon when you're thinking that. It's been a popular song in Sunday schools and Bible camps and vacation Bible schools for many years, and I, I suppose I could ask Gretchen if they're still singing it in Sunday school these days. Well, recently, when I was preparing for my Bible study on 1 John, I started humming this little tune until I realized what I was doing. And those words came back to me, love, 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 that's what it's all about. And they popped into my head. And I thought, well, yeah, yeah, it really is what it's all about. Because that word, love, appears again and again and again throughout 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. It appears in over and over again. And especially in our reading that we, we heard this morning from 1 John 4, 7 through 21. So I started to wonder if the writer of this song had this particular Bible passage in mind when they wrote it. And that's often the case. When someone writes a hymn or a, a Christian song, they are thinking of a, a very specific Bible passage or verse as they compose their, their piece of music. Well, through research and the wonders of the internet, thank you, Google Search, I discovered some interesting things about this song and its writer. It was published in 1970 uh, by Augsburg Publishing, which is the publishing house of the Lutheran Church, and they, they published it and included it in a vacation Bible school program, which I learned it at. Uh, the composer was a woman named Lois Brokering. Now that name sounded familiar to me, so I dug a little further in my research and I learned that she was married to a herb brokering who was a well-known Lutheran writer and hymn writer. And if you would open up your red hymnal, you could look up a number of hymns that her brokering has written and is most uh, perhaps best known as Earth and All Stars. 
Well, she also was a writer of hymns, and she wrote this. She composed this song, and interestingly enough, she composed this song based on our reading for this morning from 1 John. I also turned up in my Google search this sad little bit of news as I found her obituary. It was from the Minneapolis Star Tribune, and it reads, Lois Brokering, a child of God, born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on April 1st, 1929. She grew up believing that she was indeed a child of God and that every person on earth deserves to know the joy of God's love. Lois shared this way of life gracefully and began, even in her youth, to nurture children in the world with songs, arts and crafts, writings, books, games, and stories of faith. Her immediate family invites you to celebrate the way we all travel as children of God through the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. What a lovely obituary for a lovely woman. A woman who sought to live out her faith in the love of God in her work and really in every aspect of her life. She really did seem to capture the essence of 1 John's writing about love. For 1 John, love is not an emotion, it's not a feeling, but it's an action that's lived out each day as we seek to be faithful children of God. Now, 1 John has some interesting things to say about love this morning. He begins by telling us that we're to love one another because love comes from God. Indeed, God is love. He says that God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And then he makes this rather profound statement about love. He says, in this is love. Not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. You see, love comes from God into this world. It's not our own doing. It's not our own creating. It's our own creating. We can't make this life-giving love, but God does it. It's God's doing. And if we truly wish to understand God and God's love, we only need to look to the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus to begin to see just a glimpse of the greatness and the awesomeness of God's love for the world. Well, then 1 John goes on to say, give us a bit of advice. He says, Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. And if, if that wasn't enough, he says it just a little bit more strongly later on. He says, we love because he first loved us. Well, to be a part of the church, to be a part of the family of God, this community of faith, this patchwork of all kinds of people sewn together with love, well, he shows us the love of God so clearly in these words and in Jesus' actions. The love we are to love not only in thought, not only in, in creed, but, and, but in our actions and our deeds in every day. We are connected to Christ through this love, a love that is shared with others. Now, last week, Pastor Carla talked about abiding with God. Uh, that word abide comes up again in the Bible passage from 1 John. It comes up in the Gospel of John that we read today as well. Abiding with God. John describes abiding with God being connected to God like branches that are connected to a vine. And that it is a life-giving vine. Because we are connected to this vine, we are able, therefore, to bear much fruit. For us as Christians, bearing fruit well, that's not some sort of code word for being prosperous or successful, at least not in a material sort of way. Bearing fruit is sharing the love that we have first received from God. And we are able to do that because that's who we are meant to be. That's who we are created to be. Not so long ago, I was in the lounge here at the church and I was setting up for an afternoon adult class. And I asked Mike, our custodian, to uh, bring in the TV and the, the, the Blu-ray player because I was going to show a program that afternoon. And wanting to be prepared in advance, I went down and I was going to turn it on and 
So I went to turn it on with the remote, nothing happened. So I picked up the other remote and tried that one, and I, I was kind of back and forth trying these remotes, and nothing's happening. So I go up to the machines, and I'm pressing buttons, and nothing happening. By now, I was being frustrated by the wonders of technology. Uh, when Mike the custodian stepped back into the room, and he could see that I was very frustrated uh, right then, and he looked at the machines, and then he walked around behind, and he went up to the wall, and he plugged them into the power source. Well, uh, you know, plugging them into the power makes them go. They do what they're supposed to do. Well, abiding in Christ is like being connected to the power source. When we're connected to Christ, we can then live as we are intended to live, showing the love that we have received. That's our purpose. That's our meaning for our lives. There is only one problem with this. We sometimes get our wires crossed, and we think that we can love God, but at the same time show anything but love for others. Now, this is not a new problem in the church. First John addresses this very same issue with his uh, fellow believers in his day. He says, those who say, I love God and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. First John likes to use, I guess you call dualisms, comparisons. For example, he talks about light and darkness and good and evil. And now in this passage, he talks about love and hate. And he's trying to demonstrate in as clear a way as he possibly can that for those of us who call ourselves Christians, we are to abide, we're to remain with, we're to stay connected with Christ by living a life, by walking in the light, by living a life that shows love in the world, not hate. Starting with our own brothers and sisters within our own church. Because we, when we engage in tearing down others or attacking other people or, or uh, misrepresenting someone else's word or their motives, we are not staying connected to Christ we are not abiding with God. We are not showing love, but showing hate. And when we think about that, how that relates to the rest of the world, we see hate all throughout our world. Then maybe we can understand why it's so important for us as the church not to show hate among ourselves or in the rest of the world, but to show that love as a witness, an example of what it means to be a follower of the one true God. Therefore, following in the example of 1 John, therefore, beloved, live as children of God. Walk in the ways of light and truth and love, and let us bear witness through our lives to the love of God by our deeds and actions of love and mercy for all. Let us abide with God and with one another in love. Amen.